Cheap and cheerful. Today, we're going to be looking at this Monster Life Profile Power Bank from AliExpress. It has some serious power, if we're to believe its claims, and appears heavily inspired by the popular Anchor 548 Power Bank, which costs two to three times the price. I'll be testing it using my new Finercy USB fast charge tester. <laughs> with a reputation of being the best USB tester on the market. We'll see if it lives up to the hype. All that and more coming up next. So my old USB tester's OLED screen is failing. This seems to be a pretty common problem with these things. Comment below if this is happening to you. Luckily, around the same time, I was contacted by a company called Finercy, who said they liked my videos and wanted to offer some of their products in exchange for an honest review. Most of the time, I decline or ignore these requests, but I'd heard of these guys before and I figured it might be worthwhile. Checking out their website, they've got a pretty impressive range of testing tools and electronic gadgets. They do their own R&D design manufacturing. So I said, yes, picked out a few tools. And the first one is this Finercy FNB58 USB fast charger. This is their top of the line model, around 45 US dollars. Now to be clear, I've got no arrangement with these guys. I don't do reviews for money, unlike some YouTubers, many YouTubers. So this is just gonna be my honest opinion as usual. We'll be taking a closer look at that one in a moment. So moving on to the power bank, I saw this on AliExpress about a month ago and it's a shameless copy or what do they say for dodgy watches? A homage of the Anker 548. It claims all the same specifications, 192 watt hours, 60,000 milliamp capacity. It uses safe LiPo 4 battery technology, has solar input. Uh, the number one USB type C output does 140 watts, which is some serious power for a device that only cost 120, 130 Australian compared to the Anker at 300 Aussie dollars. If this thing's got anything close to the same specs, it'll be a bargain. Manufactured by Satolity. Satolity. Their store only sells power banks, and power stations, suggesting they specialize, which is a good sign. It gives me some kind of hope for the internal build quality. We'll take it apart at the end of the video to find out if there's anything scary inside and if it really has that life by four battery as they claim. First impressions, uh, it's got a pleasing weight to it. A little bit top heavy with the hollow bottom though. Uh, apart from that type C, uh, the 140 watt type C, it also claims up to 200 watts from the DC jack, uh, 22 and a half from the second type C and 18 watt quick charge from each of the USB A ports. On top is a pop-up light, just like the anchor with some switches down the bottom. My favorite though is this basic watt meter for input power and output power, as well as remaining time estimates. So if you're charging it up, how long until it's full, and when you're sucking power out, how long it's gonna last at the current rate of draw. After using this for a week, I really want this feature on every power bank. It's really, really useful. Light turns off when you close it, very nice. As for the tester, it's got this really nice uh, two inch TFT LCD screen. Let me just zoom in here a bit. Uh, USB A in and out, USB C in and out, micro USB, another micro USB to plug it into your computer at the top here. Got so many features this thing. I'm gonna try and give you a bit of a sneak peek so you get an idea, but we won't be able to cover it all. No way, not in a single video. Uh, so first screen, obviously just your monitoring, got your volts, amps and watts. We can use a slider here to move to the second screen. We can see we've got up to 10 slots here to store record data. Got the data line voltages, capacity in watt hours. So on the third screen, it's got this waveform display. We can zoom in and out, uh, see the frequency, the peak and uh, ripple current. Great for checking whether you're getting dirty power that's going to mess with your sensitive electronics like audio equipment. Moving on to the fourth page, it's got a bunch of built-in apps including the fast charge tester which we'll get stuck into in a minute. Uh, the toolbox with a whole bunch of useful features. Let's check out some of those. So for example, the PD listener. I've got this already plugged into a uh, USB charger and it's gonna bring up all the stats for the USB charger that I'm using right now. So PD 3.0, 65 watts maxed. So that meets the spec of the charger. 
think you're getting ripped off on a USB charger or you just want to check out what it is, really handy way. Now, apart from that, we can also check out the USB cable itself and see what it supports. Let's go in here to USB cable. So we can see a passive cable, USB 2.0, length one to two meters, and 20 volts, five amps is the most it'll get, but uh, a more expensive cable, so we can see here uh, USB 4 Gen 3, so that's about 40 gigabits a second, very fast data transfer, plus 50 volts times 5 amps, so that's about 250 watts. So it does both. But yeah, really nice way of uh, trying to understand exactly what cables you have, make sure you're not getting ripped off. Um, I've also found it really useful just to understand how quickly something's charging or whether it is charging or not. Okay, moving on to the power bank. So as soon as the power bank arrived, I plugged it into my Poco X6 Pro right here, which I knew for sure can do 67 watts with its included power brick. But to my disappointment, the best I could get was 18 to 20 watts. So we can see here, just doesn't want to go over 24 to 25 watts. So I tried different cables. I tried charging from flat, nothing worked started to think maybe that I bought a lemon. So eventually I brought out my old A-Torch battery tester, but I got the same result. I was starting to worry now, especially when I noticed that as I increased the amps, the five volt pole dropped lower and lower and lower until everything shut down. Now, if I was testing a cheap USB charger or something like that, I'd be certain it was a fake. But in this case, I knew there must be something else going on. So I did some research and I soon realized the problem was the A-Torch just wasn't negotiating a fast charge protocol. So we're stuck at five volts. Without switching up to nine volts, 12 volts or 20 volts, we weren't gonna get any further. Reading online, I found you can solve this by getting the Finercy and using its fast charge testing app, which gives you full manual control over the protocol and the settings. So let's try it out. So I'm gonna plug this into the input, plug that into my fastest port, then into the output, and that goes onto my load, which is what I'm using the ATorch for. Okay, first up, we'll do an automatic detection of what protocols are supported by the power bank and the cable we're testing. So I'm gonna go in here to fast charge, read the warning, we'll talk about that in a minute, and we go to automatic detection. Okay, so we have power delivery, Apple, Samsung, Huawei, Quick Charge 234, no Super VOOC, no mention of the Jeremy Mi Turbo. That explains why I was only getting 25 watts charging my phone, because the power bank doesn't support the Mi Turbo protocol, but neither does anything else, it seems. That's my phone's fault, not the power bank. So I'm gonna press the back button and then go into PD trigger. And that's going to force the power bank to output on the PD protocol. But wait, we need to be very careful here because we're overriding any of the safeguards, any negotiation of the power levels between the power bank and the device. We're controlling it all manually. So if I plug something into the output here, which can't take the voltage that I'm setting, boom. For this reason, they've included that warning message at the start and a little switch in the corner here so you can disable the PD protocol and avoid accidentally plugging something in which can't handle the volts. But we know this all can handle the volts, so hit that PD trigger and there we go. All right, so we're going to start off at 5 volts and we'll slowly step up to 9 volts, 12 volts and 20 volts. Switching on my load, it's 1 amp, 2 amps, and we can see the watts, about 10 watts now, increasing it up to 3 amps. All right, so we got 14 watts out of it. But now with the Finercy, I can choose which protocol and which setting to use in that protocol. So I'm gonna move down to nine volts, and then we've gone up to 26 watts output, move down to 12 volts, gone up to 36 watts output, 15 volts, gone to 44 watts output, and finally 20 volts, and we're getting 59 watts output close enough to 60. Now I can step up my load a little bit more from the three amps, go 3.1, go 61 watts, 3.2, 62 watts, 64, and 65. So it does have a decent amount of power. This thing should be able to fast charge 65 watt devices. So for example, let's try plugging it into my laptop. Okay, there we go, 20 watts, 26, 30, 54. I have seen it go as high as 59 or 60 when charging my laptop. It just depends what the laptop's requesting at a point in time. Okay, so it'll do 60, 65 watts. But what about the claimed 140 watts or even 100 watts? Well, as far as I can tell, to get that kind of power, I'd need something like a MacBook Pro or a Razer Blade latest Dell XPS. But I could just plug everything in at the same time. Okay, so I did this shot earlier. I've got my laptop plugged in, video light, another power bank plugged in, and I've got a second laptop plugged in, 119 watts, so 120 watts, close enough, 
pretty impressive. So by now, I'm pretty satisfied with this thing. It can deliver on its power claims at least up to 120 watts, probably more if you had a 140 watt compatible device. Okay, so charging this thing is pretty fast too. As long as you've got a decent uh, USB charger like this 100 watt GAN that Finercy ships with their soldering iron. I'm gonna plug that one in now. Okay, so as we can see, pretty quickly gets up to 95 watts and it estimates one hour and 20 minutes until it's full. Very nice. A little bit too nice though. Um, since most USB chargers don't have a ground pin, I can feel a small AC leak on the metal collar of this cable. It's not the cable's fault. I get the same thing when I charge my tablet or my laptop. Anything with a metal case, um, it feels like a static electricity style buzzing, only a lot stronger. Uh, if you can feel it when your devices are charging, when you touch any of the metal, please leave a comment below so I know that I'm not completely nuts. Okay, so moving on to capacity. Before we do this, we need a bit of a reality check. So we're all big boys and girls here, and we know that when a power bank says 60,000 milliamp hours, they're telling porky pies. You better not be telling me porky pies. Even the most respected companies like Samsung, Anchor, exaggerate their rated capacity claims. If you saw a recent video by Project Farm where they tested 18 power banks, the actual capacity for those 18 power banks was anywhere from 20 to 80% of their rated capacity at best. So for example, this excellent, highly rated Anchor 737 24,000 milliamp hours or 86 watt hour battery was tested at just 79% of its rated capacity. That's about 18,000 milliamps or 68 watt hours. And that was one of the best ones that they tested. That thing costs around 200 Australian dollars, so it's not a cheapie. So what about our AliExpress beast here? Well, to keep things as simple as possible, I charged it up to 100%, plugged in the Finercy, and added just a basic two amp load, with a fan on it to keep it cool. Once it was finished, the power bank was shut down and the result was safely stored in the Finercy. So I booted it up and we got 145 watt hours, which is about 75% or 75.5% of its advertised rating. That's actually pretty good, almost up there with the Anchor's 79%. In fact, this power bank is more than twice the capacity of that Anchor 737 for almost half the price. If we were comparing against that 548, well, we know that Anchors are usually around 75 to 79% of their rated capacity, which is pretty much in line with this at 75.5. So it really is the same capacity, the same specs for half to one third of the price, which is pretty damn good if you ask me. I'm definitely gonna buy another one of these. I've been quite impressed, but there's still one question we need to answer, which is, does it have the quality of the anchor inside or is it a bit of a nightmare? So most importantly, I wanna know whether it really is a LifePo 4. I want it to be, because that's much safer than regular lithium ion. This is a 302 watt hour power station that is LifePo 4. See what I mean? So. If this is 300 watt hours and this is 150 watt hours like we tested, really? Let's get inside this and see what we can see. Okay, so what I'm about to do is open up this power bank. You should never, ever do this. It's very dangerous if you don't know what's going on. Don't do it unless you know what you're doing. Okay, finally seem to be getting somewhere. There we go. Okay, that's our first look. It does look quite well made, at least from what I can see. There's a temperature sensor on the batteries there. They do not look like 18650s to me. So it's not just some cheap 18650 package that they've thrown in, that is something quite different. And probably, probably gonna be LifePo 4 cells. On the top end here, yeah, look, I've taken apart a lot of power banks. I haven't seen one with such fat capacitors and toroid coil. There's a whole bunch going on there. Look at all that. A bunch more screws, bunch more screws down there. So I could take out those screws there and lift this, uh, lift the cells out, but I don't think we're gonna see all that much more. I've seen enough 
for me to be confident that this is not just some 18650s or 21400s or whatever typical uh, LiPos. This has got to be LiPo 4. Um, and based on electronics, what I'm seeing here, this is pretty beefy. I like how they've got the you know, the temperature sensor on there. Bloody hope they had something like that, but you wouldn't be. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised some of the things you've seen in some dodgy power banks. Okay, let's get this back together and have a think about how we might rate it. So just as I was putting this back together, uh, I heard a rattling noise inside. Rattling noise is not cool when you've got a battery and you're thinking, oh crap, is there something that's going to arc and cross over and, you know, cause a short? I thought, nah, I've got all the screws, what could it possibly be? Until I went to screw it back on and the drill bit's missing. <laughs> so, yep, that's what the light looks like. And there is our drill bit on top of a big magnet, which helps that close. So there we go. This is pretty decent quality. This is as good quality as I'd expect. I don't know what could possibly be any better. It's definitely well made. Um, I am probably going to try and buy another one of these. It's LifePo 4. It's well made. It's cheap. It's got a lot of capacity. puts out a lot of power. The thing that I quite like about this as well in terms of its construction is it snaps back together really nicely. Okay, so let's finish up. Firstly, the Finusi Fast Charge Tester FNB58. Look, this is a very useful little gadget. I can see why other YouTubers and Redditors all gushed over it. It does what it says and more. I've only had it a few days and it's already taught me a whole bunch. If you think you're interested in getting a USB tester, grabbing this one's gonna stop you from having to buy another one later down the track, as this has pretty much everything you could ever want. The manual's really good. There's a lot of videos on how to use it. It's got firmware updates. It's about 70 bucks Australian or 46 US. If that's outside your budget, they've got a whole bunch of USB testers starting at $14 US. I've linked this one and also their budget model in the description uh, if you wanted to take a look. What about our power bank? Well, yeah, I'm really glad that I bought this. I think this is pretty damn awesome. Um, I was kind of preparing myself to be let down, but it does exactly what it says. It's got plenty of power. It's got a big capacity. Good for camping or a power outage that line in top. Uh, most important of all, it looks like it's that safe LiPo 4 technology, which increasingly for me is a must have whenever I'm buying these larger batteries or larger power banks, I want them to be LiPo 4. The other thing was it arrived really quickly, like in eight days, which is really unusual for power banks sent from overseas. Link is in the description if you wanted to pick up one of these for yourself. Uh, and if you already have one, I'd love to hear what your thoughts are, uh, whether you're able to crack beyond the 120 watts. Uh, and yeah, that's all I've got for you today. Uh, thanks for watching. Like and subscribe if you like this kind of content. Take care of yourselves out there and I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.